All right, let me welcome Lasse Aalbeck. He's a, he's a, a fantastic guy. It's such an honor to have you here, Lasse. And I, I enjoy the story that we will hear, and I will think that people will be thrilled. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, Marcus. Pleasure to be here. My, it's my honor. Yeah, thank you. Lasse is the founder, CEO of STV Group. It's an innovative and strong growth company. And they have a big mission. They want to increase trust in the, in the society. Lasse, tell us about your story and your own backstory. How, you, how, you, how your career has gone. <laughs> uh, yes. So first of all, uh, it's really weird that I ended up in this kind of a company. <laughs> uh, when I was uh, studying, I envisioned myself as a small piece in a big organization, you know, completing some big corporate dream. Uh, but I ended up fighting grey economy. And uh, <laughs> now we have a big, big vision that we want to create a better uh, living environment uh, for people. So the story has been, uh, you know, from the first beginning, quite weird. <laughs> and I think the story I will tell you uh, will be a little bit weird also, but I hope you will find it weird in a positive way. Yeah, let's see. We are very curious. <laughs> yes. So uh, I have been uh, trying to decode what could be our big purpose as a company. As I told you, we have been about creating trust, or you actually said it, and uh, we have been about uh, doing, uh, people shouldn't have to do gray economy uh, or black economy to have a, a, a good, uh, prosperous, uh, profitable business. Yeah. So we have been doing uh, systems for the tax guys, for the uh, financial inspection guys, to find fraudulent behavior. Uh, back in 10, 15 years ago, we were all about finding fraudulent behavior uh, in a big scheme uh, uh, for authorities, creating systems for them. Then we ended up creating a system whereby the construction industry, who was quite harmed by a lot of fraudulent activity, also could have systems uh, to basically create data and uh, easy systems to find out. So, so people are doing the right thing. They are uh, abiding by the rules of the society. Yeah. And we thought that uh, if it's easy to abide by the rules of the society, everybody will do it. We started out with having less than, uh, I think, first year, less than 1,000 customers. Now yeah. we have close to 70,000 customers. Yeah. Lasse, may I just ask a yeah. question? So now when I buy, buy uh, services from a provider, so what yeah. you do in practice is that you safeguard that he, he pays tax for, the, for, the, for that money. Uh, yes, basically if somebody is building a hospital, yeah. uh, a city is building a hospital, all the companies that come to that site and build that hospital, we can assure that they have paid their taxes, paid their social uh, payments. They have uh, done all the register things yeah. that the society uh, is demanding. So basically, uh, in, in a way, they are abiding by the rules of the society. Yeah. That doesn't then, mean they are doing yeah, and then good the quality, way, and but it's a base. Yeah, and when they give their, their quotation, then, then you check that it's a fair, fair game, that they also take the, pay the taxes, that somebody who doesn't pay your taxes can go down in prices. And that's, exactly. not, fair. that's not fair. Yes. Yeah. yes, exactly. So basically, all the cities in uh, Finland, all the big construction companies, all the big real estate companies are using our system, and, and they are giving more business to those those who play by the rules of the society yeah. and those who try to do fraudulent activities. I, I, it's a marvelous thing. And I know, Lasse, that uh, when we have been knowing each other for many years already now, so I know how you have fought to get people to understand the vision and so on. So tell us about that story. Now we know the, the, the core of the story, but now how to implement things like that? Yeah. First of all, uh, we, we had this great idea that when we have done these systems and we have created this kind of capital of trust uh, or equity of trust, so we have a lot of those players as our customers uh, in this uh, system. But we figured out, could we do something more? I mean, no human uh, on this earth has uh, not seen in news that our, our climate um, problems are really serious. Yeah. 
So we figured out what can we do? And, and we had at the same time, we had an idea that we could create a platform whereby the data in the built environment, uh, being construction companies, uh, entrepreneurs in that area, maintenance companies, all could exchange data to create a better built environment. Okay. So we were thinking, what if when this built environment is the biggest asset in the world, there is no bigger asset in the world than the built environment. And what is created, maintained, and happens in the built environment creates 40% of the emissions on the globe. And we use in Finland about 60% of the natural resources to create and uphold, maintain this built environment. The built score. Environment, built environment is buildings and, and roads and everything. Yeah. Yes, everything that you can imagine on the built environment. So a forest with no elements than a normal forest is not the built environment. No, okay. Anything else where there is a built element is yeah. the built environment. So actually all human and uh, corporate or, or let's say business activity, everything happens in the built environment. Yeah. Well, we figured out what if we could be some kind of catalyst company with our platform, creating data flow between these so we can do smarter maintenance of the buildings, save like 10% or 20% of the energy consumption of the buildings. Yeah. And when I presented this idea, all in our company were like, we don't get it. Uh, we don't get it. Where's, where's the beef? Uh, what is my role? Uh, why can't we do what we have done always? Like, uh, okay. I don't get it, they said. And I thought, hmm, what a disappointment. I think this story is quite good. We make yeah. a platform whereby everybody can push data there. They can trust the data and they can use it to create marvelous things. But people didn't get it. And uh, it took me many months and a lot of uh, nerve wracking, like, oh, sorry, mental wracking activity <laughs> to figure out uh, why uh, our people uh, didn't buy into this story. And the problem is that you have to touch their hearts and you have to touch something that is involved in everyday life. You have to relate to something that their children or, or they can see the impact of the next generations and, and sort of have a higher purpose. Uh, let's say a purpose by, by doing good things, uh, isolated good things isn't good enough or being uh, number one in a market segment, Yeah, very old school. I completely, I completely share your view, completely. Yeah, so if you want to get the most of people uh, and you want to have uh, basically uh, people really energetic and really flaming about passionately uh, with yeah. a big flame going about it, you have to figure out something that touches their hearts and basically is related to people's everyday life. But Lasse, you are a very inspirational leader in my yeah. world. In my world, you are the best in, in this. No, uh, no, I am <laughs> just learning. Else. I'm a novice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anybody else who is so so inspirational than you are. That you really touch people with your energy. That you come out. Uh, so when you had this this challenge, that hey, they don't get it. Yeah. So so then comes the question that we all are very interested in. How did you do it? Because I mean, you can have a speech and you can have a slide deck yeah but somehow you have to get them to talk and discuss how did you do it yeah actually it was hard uh, first I was a little bit disappointed in myself I was a little bit disappointed in everybody else and then I figured out that if I try to answer all their questions uh, basically it will not be good so then I thought about is there anything that all everybody in our company uh, shares uh, is there a challenge or is there something we want to do yeah and then i i found a way that if we could touch uh, and make a billion people's everyday life better in the built environment context and what i mean by uh, people's uh, one billion people i mean uh, people who are actually uh, working or uh, being private persons or um, actually doing anything in the built environment but we could somehow create a movement that could be one catalyst 
of being a big movement and actually then touches one billion people's life. So what I mean is that if you think about today, we are all worried about climate change. Yeah. And I thought about small things like talking yourself, uh, you know, gray and blue or, or whatever color <laughs> about the platform and how big impact we can do about the platform. Basically, if you try to touch people's heart with technology, uh, business goals, yeah. or something else that we are taught, I mean, 50 years guy. <laughs> so we learned in business school, you have to have a, a, a sort of goal that you can then get people to create better business, more profit. Yeah. Those paradigms are dead. You have to touch people everybody, uh, in everyday life and their hearts. So I, I discovered, I just have to tell the story uh, from my heart. And you know how I decoded it. I was uh, driving with my uh, daughter. Uh, she said, uh, very passionate about dancing. And uh, we were going to there, uh, uh, or I was fetching them from the dance lessons. Yeah. And I was driving her, her friend home. And when we were driving back from the friend's home, back to our place, we were talking about the future and what she could do. And, but then she said, but you know, daddy, uh, I'm not so sure about this because we might not have a globe by then. The globe oh. might have blown up by then. I was like, what? Are you this negative about the future, about the globe? She says, yes, we talk about it all the time in the school. We are all worried. And she's close to turning 15. So, you know, I, I discovered, wait a minute. And then you know all about this Swedish girl, this 16-year-old Greta yeah. Thunberg. Yeah, yeah. And the moment she has created. And I discovered we might be the generation that Fs it up. We might be the generation where everybody says that when I was in my strongest, uh, you know, um, element, we were not able to turn the paradigm around. When I was 50, everybody discovered that the world will go down. And, and we have not done anything about it. And I thought there could be no greater purpose. There could be no greater purpose whatsoever at this point of time than trying to change this paradigm. And then I discovered, God damn, we have the tools. Our company, not with any planning, not with any strategic uh, masterminding, yeah. somehow created the tools where we can put a little bit of impact and start a movement in actually turning this around and getting a better future for the next generations on the globe. Yeah. And you know, it was unbelievable. I discovered it when I was flying to Stockholm. On, a, on that same day, our, all our systems were down. So basically, for a CEO to have all your services that generates the whole money for the company, no customer could use our systems. But on that same day, I wrote everything down. It was like magic. Oh, everything wow. just came to me. I didn't have to think anything. I was just writing. Sitting on an airport and writing. Fantastic. So, Last I don't know how it happened, but... Well, maybe, maybe it was the, the kind of must situation that you have, that you have to figure out and you had this stress and that gave you extra adrenaline. Yes. But Master Steele, back to my question. Yeah. You can do the story, but how did you get, is it just that you, you told the, an exciting story and everybody understand how did you get them to connect, you know, and because without the person talking in my belief, you yeah. don't get the commitment. So how did you put them to talk and, and how did you get them to talk? Yeah, we did, we, did, we did this kind of an ex exercise. Uh, Monday morning, we had a kickoff okay. and I presented this uh, big dream, as I call it, and our purpose. I uh, explained why we have to do this and why it would be a big, big mistake not to try. And I explained basically us failing uh, or succeeding is not the point. But trying is the point. So let's say we try and we fail, but somebody else brings it on, takes it up, picks it up and, and goes forward. And at the end of the day, our goals are reached. That's good enough. It, from a business leader, a CEO perspective, this is totally, how can you say that? But you have to have that attitude. You cannot think about, yeah. now we must succeed. Now we must succeed. Yeah. And you have to they, think about... How did so, they reply? How did they yeah, reply? what we did... I didn't serve anything. I didn't serve any concrete things. I put them to work. I said, look, our goal is to make a better uh, everyday living uh, environment for people, 
more sustainable growth opportunities for companies, and easier breathing and less sweating for the globe. And then I said, divide into three groups and think about all concrete things that we could do that are really concrete, everyday happening, life events or whatever. And they came up with marvelous ideas. So mm -hmm. instead of me serving them, what we could do with this brilliant vision, actually they came up with them and you can guess how the motivational uh, experience was after that. Yeah. So well, what I realized is that the CEO is not there to serve the whole story. The CEO should be chief purpose officer. Let the guys who really know their stuff do the rest. The trick is purpose, officer. purpose has to be good in, a, in, in order for people to get motivated. And it has to touch their hearts. It has to be close to everyday life. It cannot be totally business oriented. You can connect it to business goals. But if you go with that corporate mumbo jumbo that we were taught all these years, basically no one will get excited and you will not get the most of people's uh, energy. But if you touch their hearts and souls and you see that we can make an impact on ne next generations, i.e. our kids, then basically, you know, you have an army that can do anything. Wow, Lasse. Wow, Lasse. I just said you. Congratulations. It's it's great job that you are doing. Hey, uh, I think that this package that you have delivered now is so intense that I yeah. would like to conclude this now, Lasse. Yeah. What would be your advice to these guys who are listening now and, and, and thinking that what, are the, what is your step-by-step -step advice? Now? What should they do? Yeah. First of all, I would say that um, try to de-learn all the stuff that we were taught in business school. <laughs> that, that would be my Empty step. in your head. Empty yeah, your... step number one. Uh, basically, de-learn. Uh, try to think, basically, that uh, you are telling a story that you first have to believe yourself. Think about what would be the great purpose that your company actually could do in order to create uh, something better for the next generations to come. Talk from your heart. Uh, don't worry about what your board will say. That's the first thing. Don't <laughs> think about it from the board's perspective. Think about it from your own, uh, your children, your employees, your customers, uh, and basically try to tell a story uh, without uh, fearing that somebody will shoot it down. Just tell it straight from your heart. Uh, and then, ask your uh, employees, your guys, to tweak the story uh, together with you so that we have a coherent story that we can tell to our customers, our partners and our board. And you know, there are a few boards who will shoot the story down. If it comes from you, the chief purpose officer and your employees and everybody buys into it because they see the amount of energy that will uh, be, uh, you know, uh, liberated uh, from this. And then comes the last step. Create the concrete, uh, you know, uh, objectives and key result measurements that you actually can prove that, hey, how can we prove that we are touching one billion uh, people's everyday life yeah. in, for instance, five years? So that's the final word. You have to create the measurement system. Because uh, if you have a great purpose, yeah. but you know, don't have a measurement system to actually prove to everybody that we are progressing, then basically you are missing a big piece. So that would have seen. De-learn, create the story from your heart, tell the story, engage your people, create the measurements, and then the final thing, and the hardest part, which I'm doing now, you have to create a leadership system. A leader. You have to create a... Yeah, you have to create a visual, visual leadership system so that you have your values connected, you have your goals connected, you have your numbers connected, you have your um, uh, 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 key results connected, and yeah. you have to make it visual. You cannot do tables. You have to make a visual sort of mind map where everything is connected, and that mind map has to be able... Uh, and anybody in the company has to be able to open it any time of the day. I have not found another way to do this. Uh, when you have the great purpose and you have to create the leadership system, 
that makes the numbers work, the, 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 the values uh, connected, and then comes the final part, your culture. So you have to create a culture that sustains the, the, the um, uh, reaching of that big purpose. So let's say that you are trying to touch uh, and create a, a change for 1 billion people by the year uh, in five years time uh, and you have a system measuring it, but you have a, a, a company's culture, which is inward looking, not ecosystem oriented. Basically, you will fail. The only yeah. way to touch 1 billion people is to create a massive ecosystem that grows hugely by every ecosystem you create, you find three new and so forth. And if people start to talk across the ecosystems about your stuff. So the that problem is our leadership system is not geared for this. Okay. We are not, we have to de-learn de and create new leadership system. Yeah. Lasse, thank you so much. I, I think this was so great. And I, you got even me uh, now involved because you, the, your presentation was very emotional, it was logical, and, and, and you had a really important mission behind there, a purpose. So I just love it. Lasse, thank you. Thank you for sharing this to us. And I think that many people will, will, will take your advice now and, and start to hopefully not following their systems in order to write the story, but, but they start to write the story. Thank you, Lasse. Hey, my pleasure. And the last message I would say to everyone, there is no recipe uh, for doing this. So we, we all have to sort of, there's no books, there is no guidance. We just have to decode it ourselves. There are tools that we can use, like for instance, strategy tools that you also uh, work with. But somehow we have to find what fits our company. So yeah. the problem is there are a lot of stories out there, a lot of theories, but I have found out there is no one thing that we can copy. We just yeah. have to decode our purpose. What is, what is the big great purpose while we come up yeah. from the bed, go to work, engage with our customers? If you find that and it's really compelling, then the rest will follow. Then the rest will follow. Lasse, thank you. See you. Thank you. <laughs>